Thanks for staying with us. Now, in the past six months, the health sector has come as a topic for discussion with health professionals picketing at the Ministry of Health on separate occasions. Staff of the Pantine Psychiatric Hospital last week were on strike for three days. And then, of course, health service providers complain of the arrears owed them by the National Health Insurance Authority. Now, uh, civil society organizations in health have been sharing their views on the president's performance in the sector. We'll be joined by Sam Arthur, a representative of the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations in Health. Uh, welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Um, so what is your evaluation of the president's performance in the past six months? Yeah, thank you, Daniel, and thank you for the opportunity also to add my voice to, to this discourse. I, I guess uh, six months is quite not enough time for, for us to do a real assessment of what the president actually and his team uh, promised Ghanaians. But now that they themselves are putting themselves up, I guess then it gives us the opportunity to look at a few things to see if we are on track. If we are not on track, what can be done better? And looking forward, what we are all hoping and expecting. I guess in, in six months, uh, so far so good. So far so good as in the fact that the president has been able to, to appoint, for example, in the area of health, uh, ministers have been appointed, all other persons that are to assist the president to deliver on his mandate have been appointed. Now that means the core team of, of, of his administration are together. And for me that's good. It's, it's, it's to show his commitment or to deliver on his promise now. We want to look at beyond that what has happened, what has changed, and what are the people looking up to. But for, for me, and speaking from the health sector, I just want to look at one thing that fuels the health sector, which has to do with funding for the health sector. Now, we all know uh, the budget, as was uh, presented and validated by uh, Parliament, uh, still falls short of the Abuja Declaration. You know, the Abuja Declaration is incumbent on nations that signed on it to at least, I mean, we are looking at a minimum of 15% of the total budget allocation going for the health sector. Mm -hmm. that, that, of course, we are not able to meet. And you know, that also comes with some consequences. Because already with, 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 because of that, the health system already is fraught with a lot of challenges. Now, if what we are supposed to commit to it, to have just the minimum, is even not, not done, then it means we still have a lot more challenges that we are looking up to. Now, I also want to look at the issue of, it's still related to funding, and that has got to do with government's commitment to counterpart funding either with our donors. And the major bit of it is the Global Fund. The Global Fund, which is supporting the country in malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV-5. Now, you know, I know some work has been done when the new minister came on, but government's commitment to the counterpart funding, which enables Global Fund to also release funding to help curb HIV and TB spread and also malaria, has fallen drastically. Now, as we speak, for tuberculosis, you know, last, in the last round of funding from the Global Fund, uh, we received about $27 million. Now, this year, I'm sure because of some of the issues that had to do with the fund, the commitment from government, we delayed. Of course, some, some gains have been made. The, the minister has made some payments. But uh, this year, we received only about $14 million. That's the allocation that is coming for 2018 to 2020. That's also a, a shortfall there. Now, already there are a lot of people dying daily from tuberculosis. Only a couple of days ago, the Union African region held a land conference, and we know several people die daily from tuberculosis. Mm. Now, not just tuberculosis, from all other diseases. So if we were receiving about 27%, and let's say we had about 100 people dying a day, now that has been cut to 14 million, what happens? What can we do within this limited resource range? And this was because we were unable to provide counterpart funding? Exactly. Some of it also had to do with government's commitment. Now, of course, once credibility issues begin to come up, now you cannot ask for exactly what is due you because you need to meet it with a certain mm. funding. So that, of course, also was a contributing factor. Do you then agree with that school of thought? Because it's interesting that most of the questions I had prepared for this segment where finance related, you have the strikes that were coming up the, because people have not been posted. Mm -hmm. It's finance related. You talk mm -hmm. about this pantine issue. Of course, that is a, a management issue with lands that are being sold off. But exactly. even with that, you can link it to the issue of finance. And sure. there's the health insurance. You agree mm -hmm. with the school of thoughts that 
the the main problem of the health sector is money yeah funding is a major issue because of course uh, we would need funding uh, to expand the infrastructure and bring them up to the state where they can deliver quality service for individuals. Now, the government's uh, policy on CHIPS, which is the Community Planning for Health Services, which is supposed to de deploy the basic health care, that is primary health care at the community level, was launched by the previous government. Now, I would want to look out to what, what is this government, what's the position of the government to implement this policy? So at least in the very remotest where people find themselves, remotest, remotest points of this country, they can still access healthcare mm -hmm. and don't need to travel very long distances. That I want to find out. But if that will happen, we need to still commit some resources. And it comes back to the issue of funding. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want us to look at the issue of, like you said, the health insurance. Health insurance has become the issue of non-payment of service providers and its attendant issues has been with us for years. Now, I guess we all need to begin to look at health financing in a holistic manner. We cannot leave it to government alone. And that is why, for me, coming from the non-state actors platform in Ghana, we, we are looking at how can we involve everybody, faith-based organization, uh, private sector organization, civil society organizations, NGOs, media, everybody coming around so we can raise we can raise that, that, that kind of financing. We can begin, if not even raise it now, we can begin to do the discourse around it to look at what avenues we could tap into. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we would bring it from taxation, we we'll still need to do a lot of discussion and dialogue among the people and various stakeholders mm -hmm. so we can come to that point. So we cannot leave it to government. Of course, government is already constrained. And even what is supposed to do per what you have signed in the Abuja Declaration, they cannot meet it. Wow. So that then, of course, tells you that there will still be a lot of a lot more for, work yeah, sure. to, be, to be done. Yeah. Um, so, Ms. Atta, I, I would ask for your final words on this one. Um, so, if you were to meet the president today, what would be your first question to him? No, I want to find out uh, what this government is doing with the recommendations that the review of the NHIS policy, what the government is doing, what plan it has. That was done by the, the previous government. The previ mm. previous government, because that also gave us the a clear assessment of what has been done so far, and some very good ideas, some recommendations have been profit moving forward. But I guess the National Health Insurance is a major vehicle that is to help to get insurance, uh, health care to everybody, without they necessarily paying out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. Now, that people can access health care, whether they have money or not, or wherever they find themselves. So if there has been a review which is pointing to some some factors that is to improve it. I want to find out what this what plan it has mm. to roll out the recommendations that is coming out. Now we have issues of commodities, which is critical in the health sector. Drugs and all that is also a critical factor. Now we know the fire that gutted the medical stores yeah. 2015. The report is out. We all know. Now we want to find out what is government stance on this report. What are what is government doing with these recommendations? Because drugs have been lost. And it also creates credibility issues within the donor terrain, where some of these drafts, most of which also are funded by, by, donors, by donors and also some of our partners. Mm. So we need to be, be, be up and be. We need to get very serious with this issue. And if people are found to have faulted in this process, government has to deal decisively with these right. people. So we don't, we don't tarnish our image in the eyes of those that are helping us just to stay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other bit, this is just to, to come in. Yes, and you have to do this in 30 seconds for me. Because yeah, it, it, also, it, it also ties into the issue of, you know, the, 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 the health of children. And we are looking at immunization services for children. Now, over the last few weeks, we've, we've heard of shortages of polio vaccines and yellow FIFA vaccines. Now, this, we cannot countenance this. This is not something that is acceptable. Young people need to get these vaccines as and when they have to be delivered. Mm. And if we have a system where week after week, month after time, quite an erratic manner, you have vaccines going short, that is an issue. Mm. So we want to find out, how is government positioning itself? Now that even our key funders are reducing their fund that also comes to buy these vaccines, how is government positioning itself so we can be able to sustain vaccines for young people and immunize them so we can prevent childhood deaths among young people. Right. Thank you very much, Sam Arthur, for your time. He's, um, he's an executive of the Civil Society Coalition the non -state on... non-state actors platform. Yeah, non-state actors, actors platform, platform on health. Exactly. Exactly. The non-state actors platform on health.
that in. Okay, so it's now time for business, and Emmanuel Abwaji Biafi is standing by to bring you the latest from the business world. Stay tuned in.